I hope y'all don't believe everything that she says. <laughs> but thank you very much, Judy, and thanks to all who are responsible for this honor. From those who nominated me to the Auburn Journalism Advisory Council, and especially my newspaper and personal families. From my introduction to real journalism as a member of the, an outstanding Plainsman staff when I was a student at Auburn, to my current Tuskegee News staff, all four of them, <laughs> and that is our staff. Um, my career is a reflection of those I have had an opportunity to work with and for. Because Auburn is about family, I would like to mention my family and personal news, uh, newspaper families and my personal family. This is a very special day in the Rhodes family. My mother is 90 years old. We'll celebrate tomorrow in Marietta, Georgia. She's a mother of four Auburn graduates and the wife of a, another Auburn graduate. Our family holds a distinction in Auburn history. On July or June of 1974, we had three, three children from our family graduate the same day. I don't believe it's ever occurred in Auburn history. University Relations did some stories, you know, Drew McGowan, uh, Trudy Cargill, uh, those were the folks that handled that back then. Uh, my brother Charlie, plant stand up Charlie, and my sister Amanda were born a year apart but started school the same year. Charlie is a journalism graduate from Auburn University. He is now completing his third term as district attorney in Jackson County, Alabama. He lives in Scottsbury with his wife, Elizabeth. Elizabeth Wilkerson is her maiden name. Father Frank was the band director at Evergreen High School. With Ed Williams was in his band for four years, or longer, I think. <laughs> if, if you didn't pass that geometry course, you made it an extra year. <laughs> Oh, okay. 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 The third graduate that day was my brother Mike, who earned his doctorate in veterinary medicine, and he recently retired. My father was also an Auburn graduate. He got, returned to Auburn in 1946 to finish two quarters of school after serving as a lieutenant in the 101st Airborne Division in World War II. I'd also like to recognize my wife, Elaine. She's my rock, and I certainly wouldn't be here without her. She recently retired as a bank officer and branch manager, which means I'll continue to be working for some time. <laughs> Two of our three children are Auburn University graduates, and we have numerous nieces and nephews that went through school at Auburn. During that time, we were their surrogate parents for, on many occasions, just as my brother Mike and Amanda and Charlie and I all had with an aunt and uncle who lived in Auburn a generation ago when we went through school. If we ever needed anything, they were there for us. And we tried to do the same for our nieces and nephews. Auburn is where I received my first introduction to real journalism, other than reading newspapers, which I couldn't get enough of that. I, I, we used to go to the uh, Bonton Pharmacy in Pensacola, Florida on Sunday mornings to get copies of the Birmingham News back when Auburn was winning the, na the first national championship in football. And that ought to date me just a little bit, although I was only eight years old. <laughs> um, my Auburn family is a plain I believe many in this room can say the same thing. But I was more fortunate than many because my editor was Jerry Brown. And Jerry Brown, as y'all well know, went on to be the head of the Department of Journalism at Auburn University and later Montana. And Jerry was a tremendous mentor to an eager young bunch of staff members. We didn't have a poor union to meet in. We met in the basement of Langdon Hall. Is that right, David? <laughs> Every Sunday evening. And Jerry would tell us what we did wrong or we did right or whatever, and we'd plan the next week's paper. 
I believe that was one of the greatest newspaper staffs ever assembled at the Plains. Jimmy Stewart, who won one of these awards a couple of years ago, retired correspondent, television correspondent. We also had Pete Propensky, went on to be the editor of director of university relations at Auburn and Clemson University. Lynn Scarborough, who's here today, my old roommate and a fraternity brother of mine. Uh, Lynn is the marketing director for Lindy's Magazine. We also had a man named James Thornton. James went on on the Flomington paper. And also on that staff and later editor of the Plainsman and athletics director at Auburn University was David Housel. I believe that all of our careers had much to do with what Jerry Brown instilled on, in us early on when we were first introduced to being journalists. He made us do it right. We won the pacemaker. David and I were beneficiaries of that. We got to go to New York City to the Collegiate Press Convention and stayed at the Waldorf Astoria. David from Gordo, Alabama, and me from Pensacola, Florida. We didn't know what we were getting into at the Waldorf, and, that, and that's for a fact. David's been back many more times. I haven't. <laughs> At the OA News, and of course I worked briefly with the Montgomery Advertiser in the Columbus Ledger Inquirer. Uh, I was at the Advertiser when Ben Davis was there. Uh, Ray Jenkins was still there. And I, that was before I had to go to officer school at Fort Eustis, Virginia. And then when I got out, I worked briefly for the Columbus Ledger Inquirer and there was an agreement I was going to come to the Oak Lake Auburn News under new ownership. They had Miller Grimes, was a wonderful publisher. Uh, he wrote the press history of the Georgia Press Association. Uh, I had some outstanding staff members at the Opelika Auburn News, and that's where I transitioned from sports to news. Judy Shepard. Now, Judy's pretty modest about her capabilities, but Judy could write a column in five minutes. She'd ask me if I needed one. I said, sure. She'd knock <laughs> one out. I also had a couple of nationally syndicated individuals now. Rita Grimsley Johnson and Jimmy Johnson both worked for me. Yeah, or I learned from them, I guess, would be a better way of putting it. But they, they started out just like, about like everybody else. They had to start somewhere, and, uh, and they started over there at the Oak Auburn News. I had the great fortune in 1990, Alan Davis, Paul Davis, and, and uh, Stan Boyd was still there then, invited me to become a member of the Tuskegee News. If anyone is not familiar with Tuskegee, it's a, the, the newspaper has been in existence since 1865. It's a historic community. From Booker T. Washington to George Washington Carver to Tuskegee Airmen, it's just an amazing community from a historic standpoint. Many legal cases have come from Tuskegee, established voting rights. I've been there the longest serving editor in the history of that newspaper. Uh, I've never once in all those years had a racial incident. And we're a white-owned newspaper with white editors. But I'm very proud of our staff. And there's no question that Mr. Davis was the one who sort of instilled that, which had originally started with Neil Davis, who sold the paper to Mr. Davis. So it was sort of a transition there. And if y'all were at the speech last night, you know that how important Neil Davis and Paul Davis's presence in that community helped that community make it through some tough, tough times. And we still face issues. And there's Paul Davis, a two-time nominee of the Pulitzer Prize, for the Pulitzer Prize, instilled in us that there's no issue that can't be tackled. And I feel like we've done a good job. We're an award-winning newspaper. But both individually and as a team, as a team. But I'd like to introduce my whole staff since we only have three or four of them. One is Jackie Carlisle, our community news editor who is a lifelong resident of Tuskegee. Scott Richardson, who is my assistant to the publisher, handles all our advertising and many other duties. And then, of course, Gail Davis, our owner, Mr. Davis's widow, and Gail, continues to come in weekly and handle our circulation list. And she does so wonderfully because she's a retired postmaster. 
but we let her come in and play with her circulation list every week. And of course, I'd like to introduce Jeff again. Judy did that a while ago. Jeff came to me as an intern, stayed six years. Jeff has tremendous vision, and Jeff has a boatload of talent. Jeff made us a better newspaper, and he's making other places a better newspaper as we speak. I've only worked at two newspapers the past 40 years, the past 23 in Tuskegee. I know our community about as well as anyone because I've been there so long. Small staffs have to do a lot. Everybody pitches in, takes care of things that need to be done. That's the, that's the nature of a community newspaper. But I, even with all the awards we've won and the respect we have in the community, I believe that the most satisfying thing that I see is every Wednesday afternoon when our newspapers are brought over from our printer, that we have people calling to want to know if the papers are here or come into the office the day before they're delivered. We even have some people who order their subscriptions and still come by and pick them up rather than have them delivered. To me, that is our greatest stamp of approval, and that means we're doing our job, and we're a community newspaper serving our community. Again, I thank you, but not only for recognizing me, but for recognizing all the people I've worked with and for in 40 years. Thank you.